Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere, welcome to Thursday Night Live. Operators are standing by. <laughs> it's Jerry Calverly. Hey, it's his first time co-hosting. Hey, Jerry, how you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing well. All right. How are you? I'm, I'm okay. Of course, we have technical issues straight away. Uh, As usual. Jerry can't see anything. So yeah, I'm blind. seeing as how this is a visual show, he can't see anything. So if I do <laughs> if I do this, Jerry, you can't see me do that? You can't you can't see when I do that? Nope. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show, Jerry. Thank you so much for stepping in. <laughs> Everybody else, uh, all the other co-hosts are off doing stuff that's uh well more fun, I guess, than hosting Thursday Night Live. But I've always wanted to have Jerry come in and try this. Uh, Jerry is a high school teacher at John Horn High School in Texas. There it is, right there. Home of the fighting, what are they? Jaguars. Fighting Jaguars. Yep, the Jags. Nice. So we'll talk a little <laughs> bit more about your students and the drone interest group. I want to thank sure. Wes Dunn for early super chat, $9.99, and also Gray Bearded Drone Pilot. Two pound uh, super chat. Welcome, Jerry. Tonight, prizes galore. I've got uh, free well filters. Uh, I got a carrying case. And uh, we're going to talk with Russ from 51 Drones. He's going to be our guest tonight. But first, I have to let you know about one of our sponsors. It's an important sponsor. And they are the light of my life. It is Loom Cube. This is their latest product right here. This is the Loom Cube strobe. And if you don't have one, let me throw up that graphic. Boom! You like that? There you go. Loom Cube strobe. Do you have one? If you want to fly your drone at night, whether you're a hobbyist, hobbyist or a part 107, you need to get one of these things. There's a link in the description for 15% off. It's uh, right at uh, $49, so that's a significant discount. All the Loom Cube stuff is quality stuff. Jerry, do you agree? I agree. And now, I can't wait to get one. Jerry has been kind enough to write a poem about the Loom Cube strobe and go. The Loom Cube is, uh, you didn't give me time for that. I'm sorry. That was a haiku. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, Loom oh, Cube. Oh, God. Now, I have uh, their website right here. Their stuff is awesome. We appreciate them being a sponsor. That's what it looks like on the drone. This is good for any drone to give it more visibility. And heck, you don't even have to use them on a drone. You got a kid who rides their bike at night, slap it on their helmet. There you go. Look at all these products from Loom Cube. Isn't hey, that I've fantastic? Got one. I got one. What do you got? Hey, if you have a Loom Cube, you won't look like a noob. That's pretty good, Jerry. How about that? All about right. That? Not bad Come for on. on the fly. So uh, <laughs> loomcube.com. And uh, go to the description of this video for 15% off of the very cool Loom Cube strobe now available. All right, we're going to check in with uh, Jeff Sills now as we go ahead and go to the newsroom. Wait a minute, unless I forgot something and all the mayhem. Didn't I forget one of our sponsors? Who was that? Jerry, do you have any idea yeah. who I might have forgotten? I think it has to do with a pigeon. Jerky. I think you're right, sir. Yes. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky, the Cadillac of processed meats. Yeah. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky, and you'll give your family a treat. Yeah. It's balanced nutrition to help them grow, Woo. and it's full of fiber to make them go. Here we go. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky, the Cadillac of processed meats. Yeah! Pigeon Jerky, a sponsor since 1982. Not really. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, uh, before we go into the news, tell us a yes. little bit uh, more about your drone interest group. Are the kids watching right now? I hope so. I put out a little note, but, you know, summer's busy for all of them, and they're all running around. I did get a, a note from one the other day. She's ready to buy a drone that can do... Uh, video and uh, wants to buy one of her own so she, I, I kind of gave her the idea to get the spark and we'll see what she does but the kids are um, you know off on the summertime so I don't get to see them much we, we communicate a little bit but not much yeah I gotta tell you uh, if I was a kid and it was summer mm -hmm. I would not want to see here or hang out <laughs> with my teacher 
even, <laughs> even though you're a really cool teacher. Yeah. But uh, so I have some video here of uh, what I'm calling Jerry's kids. <laughs> yes, they're too young to understand the reference, but um, I sent mm -hmm. them some stuff, and uh, here's just a little video clip of them enjoying it. Remember when Kim came by to see us? Well, he wants to collab with us, and he sent us something. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, what? Smart, Smart gesture, gesture box. Smart gesture box. Where are you? I'm assuming what that's gonna do is right. it's gonna take that camera and like register for motions that we can do as gestures. As yes. As a gesture box, and that can cause the drone to do different things. It actually changes the settings in the camera by doing gestures. Oh. So you don't have to do anything with the computer. You can set up the camera by using gestures. That's cool. Yeah. Nice what about that? Uh, we were doing a build with that web. before okay. spreading that out, but we didn't cool. get to finish it. No. What else is in there? One more I'm thing. I'm assuming that that's going to be capable of doing more or less more what USB, we did. USB cables for the cameras. Ooh. Oh. No, when we well, were, this when we were at the... Huh? Yeah, that's a power-up cable, so you can take uh, USB DVD. and power it up to to run goggles or I think this oh. DVR. Well, it is Here's my favorite part. DVR Watch in the background. And receive <laughs> our input from a receiver from our drone, from our live feeds. <laughs> <laughs> Face palm. So that's that's <laughs> yeah. in the library. He has a drone. Yeah. In, he, they're flying drones in the library. Right, Jerry? Yeah, that's Cody. He, he was out there having a good time while we were in trying to figure stuff out. Cool. And uh, we got from Robert Green. Thank you so much. Kylie got parrot. No kabooms yet. Candy and root. Okay. So they're sending me stuff, I guess. Uh, and, and I do have a little bit of uh, mail to check later on. But right now, let's go ahead and head into the newsroom. Stop the music. It's time for news. Ladies and gentlemen, all the news you'd ever want to hear about in the dronosphere. Here is Jeff Sales. What's happening? And before well, we before we continue, I'll just let everyone know that during the news, any super chat over twenty dollars instantly triggers the bird song. <laughs> Doesn't matter what we're doing, it instantly triggers the bird song. And Jeff will have to dance. Jerry, will you dance? I'll dance. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, any super chat over $20. What's going on in the news, buddy? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. All right. So starting it off, Jan Verhaven, a skilled drone pilot, managed to recreate the sensation of base jumping without actually having to leave the ground. Oh, this is cool, man. So cool. I am going to learn how to fly like this. Not like the dude, like the dude on the ground flying the drone. Yeah, this is another fantastic way of using an FPV drone. Yeah. And by the way, um, next week on the show, Mr. Steel. Oh. Yeah. FPV cool. God, Mr. Steel mm. will be on. Super skills. Oh, yeah. Have you ever uh, jumped uh, off of a perfectly good cliff or out of a perfectly good plane? Either of you? No, but I'd like to actually. Yeah, Would you? Not yet. You couldn't pay me enough to do to parachute. You couldn't oh, yeah. pay me. Now I, I would. I want to base jump, but I would jump out of a plane. I would. I would wingsuit it down into a, a big uh, pile of uh, fluffy marshmallows or something. <laughs> 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 the wingsuit looks fun. Yeah, the wingsuit yeah. definitely looks fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so next in the news, uh, we have some footage from uh, Mongolia. Actually, this is from a Nadam Festival in Abag Banner County in China with hundreds of wild horses that were running together, and they caught the video footage of this thing, and it has the spiral of all the horses. It's just amazing footage. I went everybody's head about the bird. Thank you so much, very much. Thank you for that uh, 400 uh, AGL, twenty dollars and one cent. The word is money. Maybe tomorrow I can bring those gifts to you and pick up those eyes too. Thank you. Now back to you in the newsroom. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. 
so the next video we have is It's awesome. Ever. There was one right after that from Mark's Drone Works. Thank you so much. Twenty two ninety nine. Boom. Let her rip, Ken. Thank you so much, Jeff. Back to you in the newsroom. Okay. So we have some drone video footage from. Wow, everybody's in there. Wes Dunn, $24.99 Super Chat. Thank you so much, man. That is fantastic. Oh, Jeff, Whew. so sorry. Man, I'm never I, gonna get to that, is, the news. that is really <laughs> great. Man, I might have to revoke that offer. But, yeah. but hey, any, any bit of money in a Super Chat really helps the show, and we very much appreciate it. Uh, so now back to you in the newsroom, Jeff. All right, so this drone footage uh, we have from the recent warehouse fire from Jim Beam. Keep them coming! Do you know County Droner? <laughs> Love the DP hat. Very good. Man, thank you so much. That's awesome. I don't see any more. I don't see any more uh, $20 or plus uh, Super Chat, so I think you're good to go there, Jeff. Back to you, okay. sir. So, last Wednesday, there was a huge fire at the warehouse for Jim Beam. Oh, yeah. We have some video footage uh, that we've been able to capture. That's true. Yeah, that's they lost sad. Forty-five thousand barrels of bourbon at this distillery. It got so hot that it melted the lights on the fire trucks that showed up to put out the fire. If you scroll back on my channel, you can see I, I do a lot of filming out that way with the, my buddy Brad, who lives uh, in that area in Lexington, and uh, we were out that way. And I'm going to be out there this Sunday, in fact. So. Maybe we'll go by and see how drunk the fish got in the river. Yeah, they let the fire just burn itself out um, to try to burn off as much of the distilled spirits as they possibly could, but still some of that uh, did enter the runoff and make it into the Kentucky River. So That is sad because that's those are historical buildings. You can't tell, but those buildings are very, very old. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, Jeff... You, you look like you're pained for some reason. Why would that be? Just uh, watching those super chats roll in. Aren't the super chats great? I went everybody's head about the bird. <laughs> Thank you so Sorry. much. Drone Strike LLC, $22 super chat. My goodness. He says, I oh want to see gosh. Jeff's head explode. Lol. <laughs> that nice hat. This is a totally unprofessional news environment, and I apologize. Okay, so next we have in the news uh, the prof uh, Professor David Dunn, who is. Uh, I guess potentially a leading expert in drones in the UK has recently gone in front of the Parliamentary uh, Science and Technology Committee and identified that background checks should be required for all drone pilots. Um, that due to the inevitability of a drone bringing down a plane, tougher rules need to be put in place. And that right now drones are just bought off the shelf and people have no idea where they go. So they need to have stricter uh background checks and regulations on owning a drone um 
that's a pretty pessimistic outlook. I mean, the inevitability of it bringing down a plane. It would take quite a bit to bring down a plane. You would have to try very hard. Uh, not that I'm throwing out a challenge to anybody. Certainly not. And I would hope that people, uh, humanity as a whole, will just be responsible. And uh, because, I mean, you can. It can fly. A drone can fly into an engine. That would cause a problem. But it would. I mean, you've seen all of these videos about drones hitting wings and they've done slow motion tests and all that and and still the control surface is still there you're still going to be able to i mean it would be an inconvenience certainly but i don't know i mean unless somebody had like an all-out drone attack with like 20 drones on one plane i just don't see it happening i hope i want to find happen. out what they want to define as part of that background check i want to understand what they're looking for as part of your background to be able to say you can't purchase a drone yeah that's true that, that's tr very true. Like, like what, what in your background that they could find would indicate that, that you would, uh, you know, I guess like if you're uh, like a known felon or something, or you just yeah. re rebel against the authority. I don't, I don't know. I think yeah, I'm they're probably trying to make the public at large feel a little bit better that they're trying to do something, anything, because the people that, that say that there's a drone problem are the ones who are trying to get reelected. It's a, it's a political thing. Well, and over in the UK, we have a lot of, I guess, anti-drone stuff that's coming out. I mean, recently they had a BBC documentary that talked about drones in, in a very negative light. Um, and in fact, DJI has written an open letter to the BBC complaining and expressing their deep disappointment about being described in a negative portrayal. I think we have some uh, information from Ash on this, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we do. Check this out. Hi, I'm Ashley Droning on, and just a few days ago, the BBC in the UK, the British Broadcasting Corporation, screened a new documentary called Britain's Next Air Disaster Drones. It was shown on national TV in the UK, and it's also available on iPlayer, which means essentially the content is available globally in some respect. It was produced by the BBC and a company called Windfall Films, and it was presented by a guy called Aldo Kane, who parades himself as an ex-marine sniper, but is now a high-risk advisor, whatever that means. Regardless, he presented an hour-long rhetoric on anti-drone propaganda. We don't even know for sure what the effects of a drone colliding with a plane mid-flight could be. Which also incorporated some absolutely ridiculous scientific tests, whereby they took apart a phantom drone, stitched it all together, and for some reason added some very large, thick carbon fiber rods and then propelled it all towards the wing of a small old aircraft. Now clearly it did some damage, but the scientific nature of the test was absolutely irrelevant. It was just scaremongering for TV. One observer via Twitter even noticed that actually after the impact, when they started pulling the bits out of this wing, the battery seemed to have changed itself entirely into an odd little block, which didn't represent the original battery that was fired at the wing. So. It wasn't scientific at the beginning, it definitely wasn't scientific towards the end. Elsewhere in the documentary, it talked about the possible use of drones in terror attacks, and of course they also scraped up the old news about Gatwick, whereby about 140,000 passengers were not able to take their flights because of a disruption at the airport, which was blamed on drones. And we all saw how easily drones can be misused to cause chaos during 36 hours of crisis at Gatwick. All flights in and out of Gatwick have been suspended. Now this disruption lasted two to three days. The entire global press and media descended on that airport and yet nobody took a photo of the drone or a video of it. If you want to see more of that video, the full video, the link is in the description. Uh, our buddy Ash from Droning On, he does a great job of defending the drone community whenever people try to disparage it like uh, the show Horizon did in the UK. Well, and of a special note, uh, Panorama and Horizon, the production teams that were responsible for making those videos, both went to DJI. DJI admitted to providing them an interview and in-depth background information, all of the stuff that they needed to be able to promote and show the safety of the drones, and none of the material was even used. Hmm. That's because it wasn't scaremongery enough, right? Right. Yeah. 
don't know why it's well, fun but, for people to to vilify drones. To, to anyone who is scared of drones filming them in their backyard while they're sunbathing or any of this other stuff, just get a drone yourself. Stop being jealous. Because that's what you are. Just get a drone, fools. You'll see how well, fun it is. It's, it's not all bad news for DJI because on the opposite side of the Atlantic, DJI has got uh, has made some major inroads of the United States. The Department of the Interior has accepted the independent validation of DJI's uh, steps that they're taking to make a government uh, acceptable version of the Matrice and the uh, DJI, uh, is it the the Mavic Enterprise. Uh -huh. It's supposed to have the special government version. Uh, apparently, that's working. And DJI is no longer in any hot water with the United States government. That's good because that was a big customer they were losing out on. So that's really yes, good. It was. Yep. Well, you know, it's okay. like any of these laws, though. If you have the people who are going to obey them, they'll be the ones that'll have to go through all the process and get all certified. But then somebody who isn't going to do it anyway is still going to do something wrong. True. It's really not a deterrent to anybody who's determined mm -hmm. enough. Nope. All right. Well, next in the news, uh, researchers at a Cranfield University have developed a smartphone app which can connect with off-the-show drones such as DJI and send them autonomously to inspect multiple locations using coordinates that are received by SMS messages. The app, uh, which is uh, designed for Android, Android phones, will work with a majority of DJI drones and receive waypoints that will then automatically compile a mission um, and the drones will autonomously take off. No intervention is required and they'll safely uh, fly to the locations and can be used from everything from agricultural use to uh, searching for missing people, etc. Currently, the requirement is that they still have to have a drone operator within the line of sight for legal requirements. Right, right. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next in the news, uh, based on what you guys are talking about, and Ash mentioned uh, in regards to Heathrow, a group of eco-extremists have uh, admitted that they have plans to shut down Heathrow this uh, autumn. Uh, Why? The <laughs> Extinction Rebellion plans to do mass disruptions using drones. Um, they're going to essentially do day-after-day uh, -day flights at Heathrow Airport uh, to stop flights out of the airport. Uh, for as long as they possibly can. And they're warning us why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, oh, my gosh. If you're going to do terrorism, why warn us about it? Yeah, I don't really understand the whole purpose of it. Of course, naturally, Heathrow and Gatwick both have some of the best uh, anti-drone technology uh, available to them right now. I'm not expecting to see much from this particular incident. No, but you know what? In all seriousness, even the threat costs the airport money yeah. for, to bring in uh, people and equipment and uh, preventative measures so maybe that's what they're trying to do because that's just just silly just eco terrorists yeah, just stop it so uh next in the news a group called mobile eye has come up with uh, an interesting i guess exploit they uh were doing research on uh, drones uh, and automatic cars and one of the things that they noticed was that automated cars will respond to pretty much any uh, traffic signal or traffic sign that is within view so they developed this drone oh. that essentially creates a sign that tells the car that it should be driving 90 miles an hour oh and, and so the car seeing the sign then drives 90 miles an hour <laughs> so what kind of Dumb car will do that. That's stupid. Uh, the Renault is one of the ones that apparently was impacted by this. Well, my car is still dumb, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I, I'm glad to have a dumb Mine car. You know, just just drive. <laughs> I I tell you, you know, the, I'm I'm about to be 53 in August, and I can already feel myself becoming uh, grumpy. You know what I mean? Like a, yeah. just one of these get off my lawn types. You know, just oh, yeah. drive the car. What are you doing with all this electrical <laughs> stuff in there? Well, you want to take a nap while you're going to the store? No, just drive your damn car. Nah, get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, good Lord. Okay, so last in the news, we have, uh, I guess, one thing that I'm really happy about. We've talked about the Black Hornet, which is the miniature helicopter that has been made for various militaries. Australia is using it. Yes. Um, it has just been identified that the Fury Paratroopers, part of the 1st Battalion, 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment, will be the first American troops to use this in Afghanistan. Cool. Okay, and I'm going to play a clip. And there, there are two words that that uh, military dudes love to say. Uh, and uh, if you can guess what those uh, two words are, in uh, the first person to get those two words that all military dudes, when they're talking about weapons and everything, that they love to say, uh, I'll give you a pair of eyeballs or something. But uh, this dude with the funny haircut, he's go he's going to say it. Here it is. It's a cool drone though. We're here at FLIR checking out the Black Hornet 3, which is a modular nano drone. And I mean, this thing is micro. It's itty bitty. It can hang for like 25 minutes up there. It can go two kilometers away. Right. It can see heat signatures day and night. I mean, yeah, it's total like Good. James Bond, Jason Bourne, all that good stuff. Now, it's a, it's a 32 gram drone. And this unit here that with it, with the screen and everything, the controller, we're at three pounds. The apparatus that you're holding, I mean, all the technology, Here comes. the screen, the launcher, all of it is molly. It can fit onto your gear if you're a guy that wears body armor or helmet. Yeah. But it also can mount just about anywhere else um, in a vehicle, uh, static from, like, an apartment. You can launch this thing. It's, uh, it's a force multiplier. Boom! You can watch your back there you go. while you're moving forward. <laughs> it's got beyond yep. line of sight capabilities, which I think is pretty cool. So if you need to look over a ridge, look over a building, you can still see beyond what you would normally see. Um, I think, too, if you dress it up almost like you bought it at the toy store, it's even more covert. Ah, yeah. okay. So whether you're an army of one or whether you're on the team, this is definitely a great yeah. piece of recon. Yeah, you, I mean, look at this thing. It can sit there and hover and it's yeah. looking at us and adjusting accordingly. I feel yeah. like it's looking at my soul right now. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? Did anybody get it before before he said it? The I force saw, multiplier, I man. I think, I think I think a few people in the in the uh, audience have they love it. saying that at uh, at these shows. Oh, it's a force multiplier. It's like you got a force, and this multiplies that force. <laughs> I just love those self-important dudes that are like, oh yeah, this stapler, this is a military stapler. This. Is Force multiplier on the staples. <laughs> I don't know. I just think you know, that's one hilarious. Of, one of these days, those <laughs> things are going to hit the military surplus, uh, you know, level, and right. I can't wait till they yeah. do because I want one. Those are really cool. And one thing, did you notice how freaking quiet it was? It was right in front of their faces. You couldn't hear it. Yeah. It was amazing. Yes. It was truly I amazing. Love the, I love the belly rig that they've got, you know, where everything's all nice and compact and, and, and it's all, I, it's just a brilliant design. And by the oh, way, I apologize to uh, Jeremiah Harden. Mm -hmm. uh, Super chat. Uh, Areaholic Drone Services LLC <laughs> to the bird. Well, you're halfway there. And, <laughs> uh, and thank you very much for that. And then also uh, the grumpy vlogger says, uh, my late fee. Well, you know what? Uh, between the grumpy vlogger and uh, and the other guy, I, I guess that adds up to. Uh, no, 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 no. It does no, kind of. No. It does kind of uh, add that's up to. That's uh, cheating. Nope, nope. Well, I mean, it's my show. I can do any kind of thing I want. I mean, I can add those together. Jerry, it's up to you. Yeah. Do, does do, does. I think, uh, it, I think it adds up. You're right. <laughs> Have you ever seen the video for that? <laughs> it, if you so. have a chance, Google it. It's insane. Uh, by the way, did anybody who, who who said force multiplier first? Jeremiah Harden was the first one. Congratulations, man! Uh, email me, and I will get you a set of eyeballs. Uh, if you would like to send anything, uh, your video, a picture. Uh, uh, an audio recording of your cat farting, whatever you want to send, send it to <laughs> kenherrnupload at gmail.com. Okay? Send me a, a streaming link as well. Don't send me a big, huge file because my computer goes, no, no. Sorry, Ken doesn't want a big, huge file. So, Jeff, thank you so much for, uh, for the news. 
Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll give you one quick update for everybody. Uh, this ooh. is the Ken Bird from the New Jersey accident. And ooh. we've got all of the motors mounted and all of the soldering done. So we're working on the process of re uh, combining the case. And hopefully we should be able to do test flights with it in just a couple of days. The New Jersey accident? I what, uh, I'm not familiar with. Hmm. Was that my, was that where you were? Was in New Jersey? Some my place that you... my uh, my psychiatrist is is helping me to block those memories. <laughs> I don't know, but it had something to do with a big glass building. Actually, Return uh, to home. Speaking of which, I'm not going to let you go yet, Jeff, because um, Ken from Upper Deck Media put another fantastic animation together for us. Now, uh, it's a little bit longer than what he's usually done, but it's got a payoff in it, and it's got my New Jersey crash, which I will always claim never happened. So enjoy this. <laughs> this is from Upper Deck uh, Media, uh, and you might even learn something here. Enjoy. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Albert Einstein. Today's topic is the science of a great drone video. We're going to discuss the top 12 scientifically proven things you need to focus on when creating that drone video. All right, the number one thing is preparation. You need to have all of your equipment ready to go. Number two, imagery. Mm. From the moment you take off, make sure your drone camera is focused on your subject here. Make sure you have a high quality drone with an excellent camera and gimbal Very true. editing. Just because you took some excellent video does not mean it will come across well on the YouTube. Observation. Make sure you note if there are any obstructions in your way. In the filter. Don't just go out there and bear camera every time. Mm. Journey. That's right. You want to take the viewer on a journey through your mind and your camera's eyes. True, true. Effort. Don't shortchange your flight time, and don't shortchange your viewers from the experience. Yes, yes. Return to home. The last thing you want to do is pull a heron and smash into a building <laughs> by having your settings incorrect. That's it. There's my drone. Bye. <laughs> See it falling? Knowledge. Oh. Whatever subject you're taking, learn something don't, about it. Don't yada, 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 yada. In other words, don't fill your video up with a bunch of pointless talking. And the most important thing you need, number 12, is actually hidden within the answers that we've already given. Oh. Let me grab the eraser. Aha, there it is. You need pigeon jerky. <laughs> well, that is the most important item you ever have for creating your drone video. That's all for today. Stay tuned for next time when I have new scientific formula. Excellence equals Ken Heron squared. Yeah! <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Ken, oh, from uh, Upper Deck Media. I don't know how long it takes them to put those things together, but we do appreciate it. Uh, you as, did a good job. as a teacher, do you think uh, Mr. Einstein was good with the class? Oh, he did a great job. Excellent. He did. Jeff, your I love, thoughts. I love the accent. I loved the accent. He did a yeah. good job. It was great. Okay. And uh, I apologize to uh, Russ from 51 Drones. He is standing by. So we have to say goodbye to Jeff Sills. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. All right. Now it's just us cool people. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeff's cool. So uh, while I go ahead and uh, bring Russ in from 51 Drones, here is... Jerry Calverly with a joke. I've got one today. Oh, good. Uh, why Why is bee hair sticky? Why is bee hair sticky? Mm -hmm. Because they use honeycombs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you getting these jokes from your students? No, I just uh, I did a search today. That one stuck out. All right, let's, let's see if, uh, let's see if our, out. our female correspondent knows a better one. Alexa, tell me a joke. Did you hear about the zombie dogs on the loose? Mm, no. They've been terrorizing the neighborhood. Terrorizing. That's actually pretty good. That's not bad. As we were calling Russ from 51 Drones. 
Hey, Emma Hilton's in the chat. Who? Emma Hilton, one of my students. Is oh, hey, Emma, how you doing? Yep. <laughs> there she is. Hi, so, Emma. Oh, and no Russ. Oh. Mm. And now another joke from Jerry. Oh, another joke. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> Boo hoo. You don't have to cry about it. Everything's going to be okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. If I can't get Russ on, I'm going to be upset. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he there. goes. What? What'd you, you, know, you gotta press the button there and everybody is in, and all is well and good in the world. Hey, man. Welcome to the show. Uh, you, you there? I've never... I've never been in this room before. I couldn't figure out how to answer the phone. Oh, <laughs> look at you with your clean and tidy set. Look at hey, you. Can, look at you, I Russ. See you. With your clean yeah, and tidy see. set. Now, see, now I have to. I don't know what, what you did with your, your picture here, but I got to fix your thing and to make the image better and do that. And then, and then there we go. Welcome to the program, sir. Hold on. Oh, so I thought he was messing with me. Anyway, this is Russ from I, 51 I, Drones. I with it. Okay. Hey, this is Russ from 51 Drones. And uh, the camera is a little bit to your right there, Russ. There it is. You almost got it. You're almost looking at me. There, there you are. Hey, man. What? Oh, what do we got there? Pigeon jerky. Oh, oh. <laughs> just comes in anytime. It's that little pigeon. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for making yeah, time for us, you busy, busy YouTuber, you. Did you, I forgot to ask you, can we, can I drink while we're here? Sure, yeah. Oh, he's got prop comedy going. We got Carrot Top on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> so okay. what's it? Oh, I'm situated. Well, you don't have enough to share with everyone. Uh, uh, no, I, that's pretty much finished it off. No, okay, good. Well, uh, if you don't know who Russ is, uh, he has a really great channel. It's growing fast, and you should be a part of it. There's a link in the description. I urge you to subscribe because whenever anything happens in the, the, the drone world, uh, newsworthy, uh, rules change, stuff like that, he is on it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know what? I kind of, that kind of, I kind of fell into that because um, as I was learning how to fly a drone and realizing I was doing a lot of things wrong, and then people would tell me, hey, you can't do that, and you can't do that. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should probably research this if I'm going to be telling people what to right. do. Right, yeah. And, uh, and, so, and so I started doing some research. And then I've always been a fan of, of studying, getting down to things and trying to figure out, you know, what's actually the truth and what's not, you know, what's, what's hyperbole and what's actually truth. And so, so it's not that I enjoy drone rules. I enjoy researching things and finding out exactly what – you know what's going on so then I want to share that information with people and I think you know people appreciate that because nobody wants to sift through all that stuff and try to figure out well, right know, like whatever, you get you give the, the the cliff cliffs notes right right and right, I, right I think people appreciate that and I think that's why those videos do so well because people don't know you know exactly what they're able to, not able to do and so um, so yeah I, I enjoy it and I, I enjoy like the last one he did. I'm I, sorry. I enjoy the fact that you uh, incorporated the word hyperbole. Very good. <laughs> the word of the day. Yeah, golf clap for you. All right. I went to school for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> I went to high school for seven years too. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you what do you have coming up on your channel? What 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 should interest people that have never heard of you before? Well, I'll just continue to do some drone tutorials, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that. That haven't been touched yet on on even just the Mavic Pro. You know, I started with the Mavic Pro two and a half years ago, and that's how my channel got started was with that drone. And uh, there's still some things that need to be gone through with that. But the Mavic Air, I've I used to hate it, now I love it because of the new uh, props from Master Air Screw. They make it so much better, so much more quiet. And and so I've been flying that a lot lately. I've actually been flying that more than my Mavic 2 Pro. Really? And I think part of the reason for that is. I feel like the Mavic Air for me is expendable. It's, you know, if I lose, you know, $800 drone, it's not as bad as losing a $1,500 drone. And so right, right. I take I take more risks and I, I, I have a lot more fun with the Mavic Air. I love flying it in sport mode. 
Um, and so, yeah, so, you know, more drone tutorials definitely coming in the future. Um, I'm going to always keep up on the drone rules just because it's interesting for me and, and everybody wants to see that stuff. Um, I'm actually working on a video right now speaking about, um, you know, the channels that we do, you and I and many others, you know, we focus on what the drone enthusiasts want to know and, and, and everybody that loves drones. Well, I'm working on a video right now that's for people that hate drones. And so yeah. <laughs> those, my mission, I w hope to educate people. I want people to not be, you know, guys, you, you talked about a little bit here at the beginning of the show that there's so much prejudice and the prejudice is is from all the hyperbole put out there by, by, uh, by the media. I mean, it's just seriously, seriously, flagrantly bad reporting, bad news, and it's all for clicks. And and so I want people to understand that aren't familiar with drones, know how they work, because the fear and the prejudice comes from the lack of knowledge and the lack of information. And so I Very want true. to share share that information with people so that, you know, when someone Googles, you know, can I shoot down a drone? No, you can't. You can try, but it's <laughs> like prison. Well, you, you can. Know, you like can that. one yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to be paying for it. So, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and so I really want to not only educate the people that are in our circle, but I want to make that circle bigger and bring and bring more people in. So, you know, that's kind of my one of my long term goals is to is to build the drone community with people that previously maybe weren't fans of drones. Well, that's so, a good mission. Are you going to be able to make it to spin up October 19th? Uh, you know, I just spoke with Kelly the other day and I'm I have some family things going on possibly that weekend. OK. Uh, but I won't know here. Hopefully by the end of the month, I'll know. So I really want to get there. But uh, this is this this event coming up on the 19th is uh, is pretty significant for my family. So I just don't know if it's going to happen yet. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So. That's a very polite way of you saying no. And I appreciate that. <laughs> no, no. Because no, I put no. you on the spot by asking. That's all right. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I so uh, that, cause it, I really missed out on it last year. So. Yeah. No, it's and it's growing too. Um, it's yeah. going to be a big deal this year. There's a link in the description. Anybody who's interested in going can check it out. Now, um, lately, I've been seriously trying to shift gears and force myself into learning FPV. Are you into FPV at all, the race drones? Not one bit. I have mm. never even seen one in real life. So. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, I have, and I'm having Mr. Steele on, who is a world famous FPV pilot. I'm having him on the show next week. And uh, there's a guy named uh, Vigo Koch. I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, he's in uh, Sweden. He's 22 years old. And he does what I want to do. He does cinematic video with uh, an FPV drone. And I had him send me, uh, email me a, a recommended parts list. So my race drone, my FPV drone is in here. This is about $500 worth of stuff, carbon fiber and motors and everything. I, I wanted to get like the, the, the good one, you know? So he sent me parts and uh, I don't know how to put it together. I mean, it's literally, I can show you. Here's like, here's the frame. Uh, there's uh, props and there's, now, oh, I got to show you the, the motors in here. The mo I mean, this is a whole world I really want to get into because I see these guys flying, going down buildings, and I just want to do that so, so desperately. But let yeah, me show you this. Really cool. And I'll I don't. Ed Ricker. He'll probably put it together over the phone. Well. I'm going to, speaking of spin up, I'm going to meet Ed Ricker at spin up and we're going to do a video of he and I putting this together. So that's the Great plan. Idea. So let me just make my uh, screen bigger here so I can show you. This is one of the motors. And uh, I, Jerry, you would know how to put this together, wouldn't you? Oh, for sure. Okay. Because I have no, no clue what I'm doing, but this mm -hmm. is some quality stuff in here. And uh, Those are good ones. I think one of the things for us photography drones, and this is something that I have to get past, is when you have something like this, something that you've paid a lot of money for, um, you don't want to scuff it up. But yeah. that's the idea. You have to get past that. Yep. You're going to hit trees. You're going to break props. Yep. You're going to break all kinds of stuff. You have to know how to, to solder and do uh, general maintenance on these kind of things. And that's what I want to do. I want to learn all that. And I have to get past the mental block of scuffing up my uh, new FPV racer. So, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to be one of the few gray haired FPV experts. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be out there with all the, all the 
millennials. And they're gonna, I'll go to these events and be like, whose dad are you? I'll be like, no, man. I'll race you, punk. <laughs> it is really cool. Some of the footage they get is really, really amazing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and share some of that right now. In fact, um, you got a minute, don't you, Russ? I got a lot of minutes. Okay, great. Well, I've got uh, this from our buddy Peter. He's French. He says, hey, Ken, you might like this video for speed and scenery. I got the okay from this gentleman to show the footage on TNL. He only asked that you mention his name, and uh, his channel is called Drone My Life. I've been following him and his progress, and it's a great way to show our wonderful world with FPV. He's a really nice guy and a good YouTuber. The place not far from the south of France where I live, I hope you can show it on your show, and that's from Peter. So here it is. This is Drone My Life doing some great cinematic stuff with his uh, FPV flyer. Check it out. And it's a great location, too. I will tell you that this footage was put through a program called Real Steady. I'm going to be doing a video about it soon. R-E-E-L Steady. It's made for uh, GoPro cameras and it can make it look like this. Like it's, like it's on a 3-axis gimbal. Yeah, it does. When you're in the goggles, it really feels like you're flying. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is just fantastic. That is yeah. tremendous. I, I bet your students, Jerry, watch that kind of thing all the time, and that motivates them, doesn't it? It does. They they get excited about that. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, Russ, so you have you flown? You haven't flown a race drone at all, not once. I haven't. It no. is a scary proposition, man, to 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 go from for it's you know, I liken it to uh do you have a motorcycle? Uh no, but I've driven a motorcycle. Okay. Yeah. I have a sport bike. It's a Kawasaki ZX10R. I've had it for years. It's a a leader bike as they call it. It's a fast bike. It's a it's an organ donor as they say. Yeah. Uh right. my mom hates it, but uh there's a whole <laughs> different world between sport bikes and cruisers. You know, like Harleys, and and uh, even though they're both motorcycles, those two worlds clash sometimes. Sure. And they really shouldn't. And that's really how I feel about uh, FPV and photography drones. I think that we should all be friends and friendly uh, to each other because we're all we're all flying cameras in the sky. But uh, yeah, and I, I think it's changing. I think people like Ed Ricker, you know, who's kind of transitioned into both, mm -hmm. doing both. Yeah. You know, it's a good advocate for that, and so you know, I th I think it's definitely coming around, and stuff like that's going to certainly bring over some of the camera drone people. So yeah, there's a, a definite uh, plus aspect to to using. I mean, it's just another. Way. If you're a photographer and you want to get quick shots like that, you're going to want to use an FPV drone. Now, I have another clip to show you of a of a similar shot from our buddy Vigo Vigo Coke, who sent me the parts list for my uh, flyer. And uh, again, there's a link in the description. This is him flying around some trees. This is on his channel. And I urge you to subscribe to, to him. He's our Swedish friend. And he doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but he's got a lot of talent. And uh, you should check out his channel. Here is Vigo flying his FPV cinematically. Now I started out with an open field trying to fly these things. And uh, I've talked to him before. He, in, in to making a film like this, he's probably crashed half a dozen times already. Mm -hmm. And that's stuff you just edit out. But clearly, he's got a lot of talent. 
Wow. What a unique view. What, what a, isn't it a great time to be alive when technology has allowed us to fly around like a, a like a bird? A I bird, mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah, I would never try that with my Mavic 2 Pro. No. Oh, no. I don't think your Mavic 2 yeah. Pro would let you. The no, obst right. obstacle avoidance. <laughs> yeah, even the A-Pass would do the trick. Yeah, FPV drones have disposable propellers on them. Wow. There's an amazing shot coming up here. A beautiful countryside too. Yeah, it's great. I hope you tell your kids how important music is to a composition. Oh, I will. Here we go. Watch this. Bravo, Vigo. Bravo, my friend. That's just fantastic. Thank you for I sending that. Stuffing is the drones going through there. Right. You think he's going to go over the trees, but now he goes in the trees. Yeah. I want to do that so badly. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's really um, so, uh, Russ, yes. I've got some video from you. Yes. And uh, it might need some splaining, or should I just play it? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the the, the, the crazy green-haired lady. You can uh, you can probably play it, and we'll talk about a little bit about it afterwards. So, okay, uh, so uh, here's this. Unexpected, unexpected conversation. Yeah, there you go. One thing that I do need to show you guys today, as I was filming, somebody drove up to me. I was parked kind of, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, really. And uh, I was parked there, and someone drove up to me and it interrupted me. So I want to show you that conversation right now. And here is the result of that one. So as you can see, we're getting kind of a shutter effect there. And uh, and so I see someone's pulling up here and they're interrupting me. Excuse me. <laughs> Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, What's up? Oh, um, you're not one of the dolls. Oh, no. you're flying a drone? I'm flying a drone. Yeah, I'm getting some no photos. Way. Yeah. Can you get me in the picture? <laughs> sure, I could get you in the picture. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, to imagine what she looked like, imagine, I don't know if any of you have watched the Beverly Hillbillies, I'm sure you have, <laughs> but imagine Granny, but with green hair, okay? That's who I thought of instantly when I saw this woman. And not only was her hair colorful, but also her language was. <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now what happened is I still had my long exposure filters on there, and I still had a one second exposure. so. I didn't get any clear photos of her. I should have switched it to auto, but here's kind of a blurry photo so you can get kind of an idea of what she looked like. And then she proceeded to tell me that her property was just up the road. And so I asked her if it was okay if I parked there. My property is just over the hill. Oh, is that right? Yes. Cool. Is it okay if I park here? Well, of okay, good. And then. Hey, you want to come to my house? <laughs> no, no, no. I got to. Well, well, someday I will. It rubs the lotion on its skin. And then the conversation started to get real interesting. You know that I'm going to be president? Is that right? Is that going to be okay? Yeah, sure. That's where I got no, a little weirded no out. No problem with that. <laughs> you can take me as Annie Trump. Annie Trump? Okay. And then she asked me my name, and I wasn't even thinking, and I gave her my real name. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh no. I'm obsessed with helicopters. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yep. You know how to fly a helicopter? I don't know how to fly a helicopter. So hopefully I don't hear from Annie Trump anymore. And as <laughs> she started to leave, she cranked up Twisted Sister. Now I really wanted to play this, but I can't because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But she was jamming to Twisted Sister and dancing as she was driving away in her vehicle. So <laughs> you never know 
who you're gonna meet when you're flying a drone. I was gonna get her on video, but I don't actually think she knew that I was recording and I'm afraid of what she would have done if I would have shown her the video camera. So, so anyway, it was a very interesting day. That was, that was unexpected. That's a pretty oh, interesting man. thing. She, she. I, I haven't gone back there since because I'm afraid she's gonna drive by again. But oh, she you didn't go to, even remember the conversation. You didn't, uh, you didn't go to her house. <laughs> no, I didn't. I went exactly the opposite direction as fast as I could. Um. Uh, but by the way, she had a, she but, but, had a few. Before it gets too far, and I apologize to people in the chat, I don't mean to ignore you, but that's not this kind of show. We have content that we kind of have to get to, and I don't have a chance to read the chat. I do read all the chat afterwards. I go back and I watch the show afterwards, and I read all the chat. But I couldn't help but noticing someone. Um, Ray Bob's antics. Tried a $40 super chat. Wouldn't recognize it. Damn, can just say my name. Well, <laughs> Ray Bob's antics, I just want to let you know, and anyone else who uh -huh. I've ignored that I love you just as much as anyone else. I love you all equally. And I'll just take this moment to tell you that because it doesn't matter if you offer up a super chat or if you just regular chat or if you like to play with your bird on camera. I love everyone equally. <laughs> and that is true. <laughs> Uh, so the reference that you made in there, it puts the lotion in the basket. Um, Jerry, can you name that movie? Uh, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, yeah. And what was the name of the dude who... Uh, oh, now you're pushing it. I don't remember that. Um, uh, Russ for the win. Oh, oh, gosh. I totally forgot. Can't remember. Wasn't it Buffalo Bill or something? Buffalo yes. Bill. Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Bill. And I... The one thing I remember from that movie, and it's a classic movie, if you're not old enough to remember, I urge you to go and check it out. Silence of the Lambs, just a great movie. Uh, that song that he plays while he's doing the tucking, you know what I'm talking about? Where he goes, I'm a pretty girl. <laughs> this song right here. That's a... Uh, prom song yeah it's it's uh by lazarus i think and it's called all the pretty horses or something but mm. what a perfect creepy song for that movie yeah, i'd blank me <laughs> so many great lines from that movie i apologize to jerry's young students uh yeah, that's pretty weird so uh i have another clip from you russ oh. and uh, what i like to do sometimes is i like to scour through people's youtube channels that i'm gonna have on oh. the show and oh, no. uh I'm going to play this, and then maybe you can tell me all about it afterwards. Uh, okay. I'm a <laughs> ah. <laughs> what a great day. Uh, I was so excited to get that car. Yeah. Isn't she a beauty? She's a beauty. What year is that? That's a 2019 right there. No, man. That's not the top end. I can't afford the top end. No. That's not the ZR. Oh, man. And it looks like it's an automatic. Mm. Do they even make a manual anymore? Oh, yeah, I think so. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Midlife crisis. Here we come. <laughs> YouTube's been treating me good, baby. Yeah. You, use that YouTube money. Get that vet. <laughs> and then here you are actually signing oh, the papers. The papers. My mom had a vet. It was a shiv vet, but she called it her vet. <laughs> so what are you doing in that uh, loaner car? I guess they're going to paint it your custom color. Oh, you thought I was buying the vet? I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. I was no. I was just working on some cinematic footage right there. Oh, oh so the Corvette was just a, a subject for you to film. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can't okay. believe people misunderstood that. That's you, so tease. you tease. You yeah. tease. Um, no, you made it obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made that whole video with the katana for, from uh, Polar Pro. So very nice, very nice. Um, so it's probably time. It, can you stick around for another minute, Russ? Of course. Excellent. It's probably time to give something away. It's another exciting <sighs> contest. All right. So Good. I've I've got a carrying case <laughs> for Mavic Two. Okay. This is a carrying case for Mavic Two. It's a really cool little carrying case. 
You can put your drone in here and all the accessories. It even comes with candy. That's silica gel. If you want to eat it, that's fine. But uh, so I'm going to give this away and it involves Russ. Now, I know you know the answer, so don't give it away. So the, the first person to correctly guess or find out the title, what is the title of Russ's very first video on his channel? All right. And uh, Russ, I'll let you uh, pick the winner as they fly by. How long ago did you start your channel, Russ? Uh, it was in February of... Uh, 27. Wait. <laughs> yeah. 2017. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Do we have a winner? Oh no! I, I closed the wrong window. Hold on here. Uh oh. Let me get back. Let me get back to you. Oh, let's oh. see. Oh oh. Well, that is the first. Yeah, that is the first one on the channel. Yes. How to, make, how to make a Pinewood Derby car. How to make a Pinewood Derby car is the answer, and there it is. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I made, that was actually uh, in dis January that I posted that, but the first drone video was in February. So That yeah. Pinewood Derby car video did pretty well for you. It did very well. It's amazing there, how many people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a whole Pinewood Derby community, clearly. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had fun making that one. Yep, and and that, that was, was yeah, I guess you made that with one of your kids? Yeah, with my oldest boy, so. Okay. Yeah, was good. And did you win? No, we uh, we won People's Choice. I should say he won People's Choice. It's not for us. It's for the kids, you know. We're yeah, right, kids. right. Not, <laughs> You're no, not competitive at all. No, of course I, not. We don't put anything into that. It's no. all, it does all the work. So. Of course. Uh, so who won? Yeah. I guess that was uh, the the Russian... The Russian guy, <laughs> the name I can't, the K, he's won before. Uh, yep. I'll have to go back and look. Of course, there's the, before, the, the rules state that you can only win once every 30 days. Uh, so I'll have to double check. If not, we'll give it to the next person. But anyway, okay. congratulations very much. And uh, so, Russ, what, what else What else you want to share with us? What, what do you got coming up uh, that we should? Uh, let's see. More drone rules, more drone tutorials. I'm actually going to um, do... Some people have always been requesting one of the missing components of our niche is editing. How do people edit their drone footage? They got mm. all this footage, oh, yeah. and I've done one of those, and it did very well. Right. And okay. So every time someone comments on it, when are you going to do another one? When are you going to do another one? And so I'm going to do some more of those. I, I really enjoy the editing. I didn't at first because you know it was relatively new for me, and now I get to where I can kind of be a little more creative and – and hopefully I can get people to get that footage off of their uh, micro SD cards and get it on to their social media or get it onto YouTube and share it. Because what's the point of getting this awesome footage and then just leaving it there? You That's know, you true. Wanna... I'm sure there's people that have just hard drives full of stuff that they right. like, never share. Like I still do. So I just want to help Jerry. people get there. Because <laughs> I do. Yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, you, you spend all that money and then you record all that footage and then it just sits there and you don't right. get to brag about it yeah so. you want to share it with the world and of course you'll yeah. probably talk about uh the lance system as it becomes available to hobbyists uh, yep. july 23rd right yep coming up really quick here in a couple of weeks and uh i'll be on vacation right before that so i'll probably uh not get anything out that day but shortly thereafter i'll uh, get some content out about lance lance is going to be huge for hobbyists to be able to fly where they couldn't for a couple of months and uh you know, I don't think that stopped many people from flying <laughs> where they weren't supposed Very good. to do it. And by the way, I just uh, I just noticed that uh, Ray Bob's antics, forty dollars super ooh. chat. <laughs> Maybe it had <laughs> something one. to do with the fact that I told him that I loved him, and I yeah, do, and I appreciate it. Now let's see who do I love. If that's going to start the super chats going, let's see. Uh, oh. Let's see. Uh, oh, Cardoso Media. I wanted to let you know, Cardoso. <laughs> I'll go through each one to get the super chats. But thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate that. Ray Bob's antics. You are helping the channel greatly. So uh, please subscribe to Russ and his channel, 51 Drones. It's a great channel. And uh, you do good things for the droning community. And we all appreciate you. Thank you. you so, Can you I tell him well. something real quick? Uh, yeah. What do you got, Jerry? The other day I was watching the one where you talked about the rules for hobbyists and how you went through all the steps. And then at the end you said in 60 seconds and you went back through them real quick. That was really cool. I like that. You did a good yeah. job on that. I People love that like, video. Thank you. Thank you very much. People 
people don't like long videos. They want to get to the point. Mm -hmm. They want the information and then go on with their lives. And so I figured if somebody wants to watch the long version, go ahead. And if you just yep. want to see the abridged version, just watch that. Timestamps. I try yep. to put timestamps in my videos as much as possible yep. to avoid the you know the folks that don't like to watch. Yeah, the, people don't know. like long videos. Is that why uh, nobody watches Thursday Night Live? Because <laughs> it's like three, three hours. hours. <laughs> three hour video. Yeah, that's right. You got I, 320 on right now watching. Is that so right? That's pretty good. Yeah. That's awesome. Let me know in the yeah. chat uh, if you watch the entire thing or you just come in and like for a couple minutes and then get bored. Yeah. Let me know if you watch the entire thing, if you're willing well, to admit it. But well, uh, I, I did save it as a uh, favorite now. So I'm going to show that to my kids when we start our class in the in the spring. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, in the fall. See, that's what this is about. This is about sharing and and helping other people get get to where we are. And so, mm -hmm. especially kids, that's pretty fun. My kid is finally my oldest, actually my little guy too, is finally getting interested in drones. And it took a while because of the apprehension of, I don't want to crash dad's thousand dollar toy. You yeah, know? Right? that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid. But I bought, a, I bought a couple of toy drones, and now they fly them. They just flew them here right before it came on the show. And so I think that's. That's really cool that that I can uh, you know spread the love a little bit. So yeah, Absolutely. all right. Well, thanks for being on, and uh, we we will uh, talk to you again real soon. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank Here's you your again. Thank you, guys. Transition. Now it's time for the next thing that's gonna happen, and here it is. Well, he was awesome, wasn't he? He was. I love watching his videos. Yeah, they're great. And he always wears that hat, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, well, well, he does. Is that yeah. a trademark or something? I don't even know if he's got good <laughs> hair under that thing. What do you think? Do you think he's got good hair, Jerry? Uh, I don't know. I'm, you know, he probably doesn't. I mean, we all can't have my hair, can we? <laughs> no, we can't, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> um, oh, Ethan Mitchell, $20 super chat. Can you are the king of sound effects? Well, thank you. And here's one for you. Ethan Mitchell, you're awesome. Appreciate it. I don't so, know if you planned on it, but did you want to do a would you ride it with him? Oh, that's right. Son of a gun. Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to do a would you ride it with you. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, okay. It's time for Would You Ride It? And Russ, if you're still watching, if you're in the chat, let me know if you would mm -hmm. ride it. Now this week, uh, this is a pretty interesting thing. Uh, this is made by a Dutch company, and it's called the PAL V Flying Car. Uh it's a pretty interesting thing. I think it's, it's a, uh, I don't know. I, I'm on the fence about this one. It's made by a Dutch company. It's got leather seats. Maximum takeoff weight is 2,000 pounds. Well, it's slick looking. Yeah. It's a car that flies and a plane that drives. Top driving speed is 100 miles an hour. Top flying speed is 112 miles an hour. Wow. And I think this is computer uh, animated, pretty sure. But, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool concept. That's what the inside looks like. It looks really cool. Yeah. I think anything like this, I would have to wait until it's available to the general public and then, like, for a decade, nobody crashes. <laughs> then I'll get one. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm a no on that just because I am enjoying life right now. Uh, Jerry, thoughts? What do you think? I, you know, I've seen things like this fly in real life, and honestly, they're not that unstable. I probably would ride it. You would? Yeah. Uh, Jake Sloan, our Alaskan friend, says, oh, hell yes. Yeah. Or, oh, heck yes, he said. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man, you can just fly to work like that dude right there. And drive it drive it home, drive right, it back out. Right, right, right. Uh, it's called the PAL-V flying car. What else are people saying? Phantom Flight 101 says, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick uh, Albert will fly it. Art Co. Art uh, says, I would ride it. Uh, mm -hmm. Ken Legault, I would every day. Uh, oh, Debbie Joy Christmas. Yes, yes. And by the way, uh, that's, a, that's a person's last name, Christmas. Hmm. And uh, it says it's just an auto rotor. Speaking of which, I got some mail. I got mail! Yay! I got mail! Yay! Okay. 
You've got mail. I got mail. Yay. <laughs> I did get mail. And at first it was a mystery. Because a box came and inside the box was candy. And I love candy so much. I love it so much. And I was like, woo, this is good candy. This is, uh, you know, candies, candies. Mm, and this just good. came with no note, nothing. And then I got an email saying, did you get the candy? And it was for uh, Debbie Christmas. Ah. Thank you, Debbie Christmas. Man, it's awesome. I really want to have one right now, but I can't. Because oh. as, as a professional broadcaster, you shouldn't eat, right? If you ever hear a, right. a DJ on the radio chewing gum, uh. <laughs> that's just unprofessional. Or uh, eating a toe of Satan. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, for those who don't know, a toe of Satan is a really hot lollipop that I made Kelly eat. Kelly will be co-hosting next week. and oh, um, funny. It was right up there on the Scoville scale of almost kill you. So Death. I've got one more little bit of mail here. If you want to send me any mail, you can go ahead and send it here. It doesn't have to be candy. It could be anything. Well, not, you know, nothing that's dangerous. Dangerously fun? Dangerously delicious? Ken Aaron, 215 Baker Road, Huntington, Tennessee, 3A344. And the final piece of mail that I got was a postcard. I haven't gotten postcards in a long time. This is someone who visited the, uh, the Disneyland or world. What is it? Uh, Don and I just returned from visiting the planet of Batu. You know, from the, the Star Wars exhibit. Oh, at the, yeah. And uh, I want to go there. Disney knocked it out of the park. Amazing. We made our lightsabers and brought a few, th bought a few things. Awesome trip. Going back in August. Uh, Kelly Coulter, thank you for the postcard and for thinking of me. Appreciate that. Yeah, they said everything has got uh, strange language on it. They don't have any. Like if you buy a Coca Cola, it looks like Coca Cola, but it says something else. You know what would be fun is to is to go to the Star Wars exhibit and uh, uh, like uh, dressed up as a, a Star Trek character and see how long it would take before you got your butt handed to you. <laughs> right? There's the door. <laughs> right, because, you know, you're walking around there. Is that Klingon? Ooh, I'll just, ooh, you know. Uh, let me know uh, if in the, in, the, in the chat if you're a Star Trek person or a Star Wars person. Just put mm -hmm. uh, uh, Trek or Wars in the chat. I'd be interested to, to view that later. We got to get to some videos, but I wanted to remind everybody that if you're uh, worried about birds flying into your drone, there is a solution, and that is yep. the eyeballs. Uh, I've got them in uh, vanilla and chocolate. The chocolate one fell on the floor, but this is the vanilla one. Uh, Ten dollar super, super chat, or you can uh, PayPal me here at uh, this address. You can send that to there. Thank you, drone That's trucker, it. aerial photography. Howdy from the trucking world, and my me and my son are going to go get some drone shots from you from. Uh, Guinea Springs, Florida. Thank you so much for that. Looks like they're mostly trekkers out there. Yeah, I, I have to. I lean trek. I mm. I'm a fan of. I mean, next generation, all that stuff. I'm a Picard man. Mm. Uh, I love that stuff. But you know, Star Make Wars is so. cool too. Yeah. Make it so number one. <laughs> um, still gonna give these filters away. These are Freewell filters, and I thank Freewell very much. They've been providing a prize for each and every week. And these are ND filters for anything, for any camera that you have, any drone that you have, you just pick. We'll give those uh, away in a unique uh, way later. But look at these things. These, are, This is a quality item right here. And it's a magnet like lid. Look, it's just, it, it, so it won't. Isn't that That's cool? That's nice. That's for the uh, Osmo Action. <clears throat> so give some more of those away later. Uh, is, is, how, wow, okay. Well, the show is just flying by, isn't it? It's going fast. Um, all right, I have to share this one be, just because it's so cool. And, and um, it has to do with uh, our Independence Day last week. It says, hey, Ken, I got a video here on what our Independence Day entailed. I wrote to you a while back about Raptor Incorporated in Milford, Ohio, where my wife is one of the two directors. They rehabil rehabilitate all birds of prey in the region. My involvement is limited to catching and transporting injured birds, but I also released the ones that I brought in. A couple of weeks ago, a young, maybe three months old, bald eagle was caught in heavy rains. 
He didn't have enough oil on his feathers and became too heavy to fly. Crash landing in the middle of a Boy Scout camp, they contained him and Raptor came and picked him up. Edgar, named by the scout, spent a couple of days drying out. He had no major injuries, and so after a couple of weeks of getting his strength up and uh, the oils to weatherproof himself, he was cleared for takeoff. And we thought that it was fitting that he was freed on July 4th, and he's got video from that. And uh, here is Edgar the Eagle on his Independence Day. Enjoy this. Quite the audience. Look at that. Have you ever seen one of those things up close? They're huge. No, I haven't. They are huge. And you can see why they'd be a danger to your drone. Mm, for sure. They're all ducking. <laughs> you can see them over there? Yeah. <laughs> Get those talons away from my face. I know I'd be ducking. Go, Edgar, go! Yes! Freedom! That was great. Uh, yep. So Jerry, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this up to you to pick okay. to pick the next one. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're you're a you're a teacher at yes. a high school. Well they call me one. Do you want to see a video about a cool train? Or do you want to learn about an app uh, that can, dem can sh use math to give you the distance from your drone. Math Ooh. or train? You know what I I'd pick. I'm going for train. No, you're summer, doing that just break. for me. Summer break. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're Okay, all right. So no, math, cool no math for another month, at least. <laughs> okay, well, this is from Brent Newman. He says, hey, Ken, I had the privilege of shooting rail traffic at the abandoned Big Canyon Quarry along the Washita River, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in the Arbuckle Mountains of Oklahoma. It was a blast. Crush Rock production began there in 1886 to provide ballast for the expanding Santa Fe Railroad. Many thanks to the Sooner State Rail fan group for allowing me to tag along with my Phantom 4 Pro. Keep up the good work in Brent Newman. So here is a really cool train in Big Canyon, Oklahoma. Jerry, there's just something about trains. I, I love filming trains with the drone because you can yes. see where they're going to go. You know what I mean? Like, Yes. There's no surprise where their route is. <laughs> you're never going to get you're never going to get your drone run over by a, a train by accident. No, but you can't have it ran into. Yeah. Yeah. FPV Tommy. Yep. He just did that recently. Oh, yeah. Well, that's... Don't fly so close to a train. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I like it when you can see the entire train like that. Yes, it's, super uh, long. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. You ever been to Oklahoma? Oh yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think the the word you were trying to mention a while ago was Washita. Washita. That's yeah. it. Like Washita Baptist. Yeah, people. sorry Washita people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I love it. I've been to Broken Bow and different places. It's really nice. You can tell by the red. I apologize. Uh, there's a town near here called um, Milan. And if you're from out of town, it's mispronounced all the time, Milan. So I know what it feels like to be local and having some schmuck from another state mispronounce a city, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't know I spoke Yiddish, did you? No, no. Hey, I'm from Philadelphia, man. Very Hasidic up there. I don't know where else you find red rivers, but that's about where you'll find them all the time. It's in all the dirt up there is red. Is that from the clay? Yes. Okay. It's that whole area. Matter of fact, I know people that have come down from Oklahoma and they drive down with their trucks and you can tell because they're the ones with the red clay all over the bottom of the trucks. Mm. Well, now, of course, you know what we have to do. Oh, yeah. We have to study our math. We got to study our math. 
And for, yeah. for those in uh, in Europe, uh, we're, we're talking about maths. <laughs> maths. It's maths. a maths maths lesson. So yes. you you with your maths and your aluminium. Huh? All right, Dave. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, this is from David Geller. And he says, Ken, I really enjoy your videos. Thank you for all the time you put into making them. I am part of my fire department's drone program, and we recently had a really successful mission. We were asked to help locate the source of an illegal burn and managed to do so by launching one of our drones and panning around till we saw a smoke column. That exercise relied upon local knowledge and some guesswork to find the location. That got me thinking about whether I could calculate the exact location of a remotely observed object. So, I built an app. Uh, wow. If you have a chance to try it out and offer your feedback, I'd be grateful. It's a web app, so you don't have to visit the app store, and it works on any browser. There's a link in the description if you're interested, and uh, he's made a short video about it. This is from uh, David Geller, uh, clearly knowing a lot more math or maths than I ever will. Uh, check this out. Modern drones are very good at telling you their exact location. But did you ever wonder how you could figure out how far away something in the viewfinder was? Well, you can with simple math. Take this example. How far away is that lake from the current drone's position? Could we calculate that exact position? With drones capable of moving their gimbals, the answer is yes. With just a few pieces of information, it's possible to determine the exact location of a distant object observed in your drone's viewfinder. The key is knowing the altitude of your drone, its compass direction or bearing, and most importantly, the angle that the gimbal is at. This will help us use the law of signs to determine the distance from your drone to that object observed in the viewfinder. To use this, record your altitude, determine the attitude or angle of your gimbal and the compass or bearing of your drone. Plugging those into the application will provide you with an exact GPS location of that distant object. This is an example of the application in use where we're plugging in a few values. They're different than the example we showed you just before. Pressing the calculate button will determine the distance and location of that distant object and pressing the map button will display that point on a map that is really cool man it is it's awesome wow you were nodding like you're understanding all that stuff did uh, you understand I, it's similar to what we do when we're trying to find out the height of one when we launch them outside like air rockets yeah you stand back and use a little like a sextant looking thing and it tells you the angle and then you know the distance from the launch pad then okay. you know how high something went. It's pretty. It's, it's backwards from what they were doing. Interesting. It's the you, same thing. You think uh, it was that trigonometry? Um. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. Um, it was hard. It's hard math. Yeah. You know, I've um, I've since forgotten. Mm -hmm. Uh, from lack of use, they say if you don't use uh, the the knowledge, you forget it. And aha! I think uh, third through ninth grade is just gone. Pfft, I had to make room for other stuff. I had to make room for jokes. So I deleted yeah. third grade. <laughs> but thank you for sending that. And there's a link <laughs> in the description. Uh, much appreciated. Um, now, I have to let everybody know. There, I, met, I saw a few people in the chat talking about how they're studying for their Part 107. And uh, if you're looking for a great study guide, well, by golly, you're going to want to use remotepilot101.com. Jerry, you're going to yep. you're gonna have to come up. We can't. I can just see your eyes there. I gotta leave the I've sign. I got it. You, okay, you, can you? Okay, good. Uh, RemotePilot101.com. There you go. Uh, it's taught by a guy named Jason Shepard. And uh, if you use Heron 18, you get 30% off. This is a great place to study, uh, to take practice quizzes. This guy, Jason, the instructor, uh, he does videos to teach you. He's written eight aviation flight training books i would say he's qualified i love his videos I, i've got that um program and i use it and i'm learning from it yeah and once you sign up you're there for, that's for life so you know if yep. you have to renew what you have to do your part 107 every two years 
they always update it. It's always up to date. If there's any changes, Jason's right there with a new video. Uh, let me show you the website. If I can take the sign off of Jerry's face really quick. Let me just show you the <laughs> website. RemotePilot101 at dead cam. There it is. That's what Jason looks like. You can take the, the complete course. You got your choice of two flavors there. And then uh, here's all the, the, the lessons that you'll learn. Like I said, they're updated. And uh, there's all his qualifications. RemotePilot101.com. Mm -hmm. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, thank you very much for sponsoring the show. That's great because you can use it from your phone or from a PC, and they, they works really good. That's right. That's right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So uh, I have a video here about a bird attack, and this guy is asking for your, your guy's uh, opinion. Uh, this is basically, is it real or fake? Hmm. I have an opinion. I'm not going to share it until after I show the video. But he says, uh, greetings, Ken. I found a video that I thought you could uh, confirm or debunk for us if you can spare the time. The YouTuber in me truly wants it to be real, but the logical thinker in me is screaming, <clears throat> fake! <laughs> so uh, I'm passing it on to you and your viewers to decide. Uh, if it's real, it's a stuff of nightmares for a drone pilot. Either way, I think it's a cool video and I wanted to pass it on to you. And that is from Ron from uh, 3X Drones. Okay, so this is a short clip. It's of a bird attack. <laughs> And you let me know if it's real or fake. I'm fairly confident of my opinion, but you decide. Here it is. So you can see the bird coming in. And... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's coming in for the kill. Yeah. Ah! And then there's that little feather. See, it's that little feather. That tells me it's that, probably fake. I'm leaning yeah. over, but I'll play it slower. The CGI, CGI so much is hard to tell now. It, it does look like a layered effect, like a green screen, like a chroma key. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Jerry, your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I, I have to say it's fake. Yeah, I'm going to go with fake. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's CGI. It's a good one, though. Well, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's 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 pretty good, but it's uh, pretty good. you have to be careful of those uh, those things. What are those things called, uh, Jerry? Mm, birds. Oh, well, everybody's heard about the bird. bird, 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 bird. All right, we've we've. <laughs> <laughs> you were mid dance, man. <laughs> I know it's. It's not much fun with Jeff's not on, not on doing Right, 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 right. I, I don't want to OB. I don't want to overbird. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm trying to keep the shows a little shorter because uh, I, th I think uh, people are getting bored. You guys getting bored? Bored, boredy, bored, bored, bored? I don't know. We're at 301 right now. Oh, that's great. And that's great. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what, what else did I, what else uh, did I, uh, what else did I? <clears throat> oh, I know. I know what we need what? at this point. I mean, all the stress from having that fake CGI oh, yes. bird uh, flying right mm -hmm. in our faces. We probably need a little uh, bit of razzmatazz. Ah, oh, let's step into the razz chamber. Everyone, let's just hop on in here. What happened? Says no well, audio. No audio. Yeah. What happened? Maybe it's Raz. Do we have to re raz? We have to re raz. Yeah. I apologize. I must have inadvertently hit the wrong button. <clears throat> but as I was saying, 
This is a place of peace, a place where nothing can go wrong. All of your aches and pains of the day get melted away. All of the troubles that keep you up late at night just dissolve into the ether that is uh, the Rev. So take a moment, take stock in what is good in your life, and remember, when no one else does, the Rez always loves you. Mm -hmm. Do we have audio that time? I think so. It looks like Mark Rogers. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I get overzealous with the button sometimes. I forget. It's like, what's going on? Hey, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, Jerry. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about your drone interest group? Because I yes, think what uh, you're what you're doing with the students at your high school, it's it's amazing. You teachers are such an underappreciated uh, group, it, and teachers like you who really care about the students and go out of their way. I mean, your life is is teaching and and your students, and you is. you created the the students. drone interest group. How how did that come about? Um, the brief the brief part of it is we. I was doing it anyway, and the kids saw as I was bringing things to the school to work on them and play with them, and they were like, hey, can we learn how to do that? And I said, sure. So we started a little after-school club. Then we got together with uh, Miss uh, – uh, oh, my goodness, I just blanked her name. She's going to kill me. <laughs> uh, anyway, we got together with the library, and, and she helped out uh, because she wanted to start getting drones into the makerspace. And then we went on from there, and it just has grown. And now I've got two classes starting next year with 40-something kids total. That are going to be learning how to do RC planes and uh, and in quadcopters next year. I'm going to teach them all of it. That's fantastic. We because that's going to be exciting. Drones are here to stay. They are a part of our life now, and yes. uh, it is an industry that can be taken advantage of if you know a little bit about it. And these are things that you should learn uh, at, at the, your kid's age. Absolutely. Yeah. And besides, Absolutely. even if you just have a drone, you're just doing it for fun. I mean. What a great time in history to be alive where you can fly. Everyone's always wanted to fly. You put the goggles on, yeah. you're flying, man. You're flying. You know, and you know what you went through to just learn how to do the basics of, of getting to learn FPV, and then you're going to learn how to build. It's crazy. The stuff that they're going to learn, the electronics, the soldering, the programming, all of it's going to be involved. It's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Uh, now it's probably time to give something else away. Should we do that, Jerry? Yes. All right. Hey, we're giving away more junk. Thank you, Jingle Singers. Free stuff. All right, free stuff. This will be for the Freewell filters. $130 value. And this is for any drone or camera. These are the uh, Freewell All Day 4K Series filters. And so, here is the question, and I'm going to let Jerry uh, pick a winner on this one, okay? Uh-oh. Okay? Okay. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a very subjective question. Uh-oh. And I'm actually, uh, I didn't, I forgot to do the research on this, so I'm pulling it out of my, um, <laughs> my, my other research area, which is somewhere down here. I'm pulling it out of the question area. So here it is. Okay. First correct answer, according to Jerry. Uh-oh. I better keep watching the chat. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And go. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Very subjective. I have a feeling that the chat's about to explode. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> Do you know if there's an answer to that? Uh, no, there's not. But oh, okay. I've got, my, I've got my thoughts. Okay, so basically, uh, Jerry's going to just pick some. So we're, we're doing this for the, uh, the, the Freewell filters, $130 value. That's awesome. Freewell will send it directly to you. And uh, okay. once again, the question, how much wood? Could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could, in fact, chuck wood? And the answer is, the winner Enough is... To use for his intended purposes, which is 
Gabe Havel photo. Gabe, congratulations. <laughs> now we're going to have a bunch of people look. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> no, nope. oh, sorry. That's, that's the right answer. Yeah, that's, 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 the right answer. that's the right answer. And remember. The decision of the judge is final. Unless we change our mind. Very true. <laughs> All right, congratulations. You got yep. some really cool filters for your camera. By the way, Brenda Allen is her name, and I don't know why I blanked it for a second, but it's Brenda Allen. She's been such an integral part of this group, and I can't even believe that I blanked her for like one second. Well, oh. that's okay, man. You got a lot going on up in there. Right. You're getting those, you get I'm a those, nervous. Those, uh, those uh, sportscaster headphones might be a little tight. <laughs> hey, hey uh, the, the, give, me, give me a little Howard Cosell. Why you, why, you have, why you have those on? Well, let's see. What's going on today in football? Wow. That was, <laughs> that was truly horrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're about to wrap this show up. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And um, it's just a fun thing to do. It's, it's hard work. Uh, I'll show you all the hard work. You can see all the hard work that, I, that I'm doing here. Camera two. Yeah. And... Uh, so I, I really appreciate everybody. So we're about to wrap it up. I got a couple more videos to share of Utah. I've got two videos of Utah. The uh -oh. first one, uh, the second one will be the viewer video of the week. The first one is from our buddy, Chris Rollins, who uh, sometimes hosts the show. This is uh, Chris Rollins in Torrey, Utah, using his Mavic 2 Pro. Enjoy this. Cool. Is Utah There's some beautiful country up there? There sure is. Is Utah a flyover state? I don't know technically if that is. It's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous. That's erosion, I've that, kids. I've got, I've got a friend that does a lot of off roading motorcycles and four wheel drives and stuff up in that area. Tell them to be careful. There's a lot of cliffs. Oh, yeah. You don't want to. <laughs> You don't want a wily e. coyote it off of. <laughs> I mean, isn't that really? I mean, it looks like that looks like a wily e. coyote. It looks like Roadrunner oh, should be down there. Absolutely, I think that's where they modeled it after. Right? I mean, there should yeah. be a coyote there painting a fake uh, tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Put the target meet. on the ground. Yeah. The handful. <laughs> I, I think I saw Acme somewhere in there. <laughs> yes, Acme bricks, Acme uh, everything. <laughs> right, Acme huge Explosive. magnet. Right, yeah, yeah. TNT. This is Chris Rollins wow. doing a great job here. It's beautiful. I think there's still a link in the description if you want to check out his channel. Look at that. That's Absolutely. good stuff, man. Utah. Thank you so much, uh, Chris. And now... The viewer video of the week. Oh boy, I can't wait. And it is from Dan, the droning veteran. And he writes, oh. hello, Ken. Last weekend, I took the, the fam, short for family, uh, mm -hmm. high up into the Utah mountains to get away from the city for a few hours. This clip is of our little adventure. I wanted to share some of Utah's beauty with you. I know visiting Utah isn't technically leaving the country, but it's close enough if you have never been here. Although this video didn't turn out exactly how I was hoping, and I came really close to scrapping and deleting it, I decided to share it with the YouTube world, and I'm glad I did. And we're glad you did, too. This is uh, from Dan, the droning veteran. It's the viewer video of the week. Check it out. Hello, everyone. My name is Dan, and I am the droning veteran. I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm coming to you on location up in the high Uinta Mountains in Utah along the Mirror Lake Highway.
wonderful. Isn't Man, that great? That's beautiful. That is from uh, Dan the Droning Veteran. Thank you very much for your video and thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, but before I go, I just want to take a moment and, uh, it, you know, the one, the once in a while you just have to sit back and reflect and think about where you are in life and in the world. And I just think it's just so wonderful that we're all alive at the same time and we have a similar shared interest in this whole drone and photography thing and that technology has allowed us to come together in this forum, on this channel, in this uh, YouTube sphere, and share all of the beauty of the world. It just, it, it makes me choke up because I get so much, I get uh, uh, videos from everywhere in the world and places that I might not ever visit. And uh, it's, it's just a great thing to corral it all together here for you and to, to share in uh, this great hobby that we all love. And with Absolutely. that said, I thank you very much, uh, Jerry, for co-hosting today. And uh, thanks, everybody, for your, your super chats. And uh, I guess that'll do it for today. We hope you enjoyed the show half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jerry Calverly. John Horn High School, thanks to you and all of your students for perpetuating the drone hobby. And uh, I thank Russ from 51 Drones. Now, um, coming up next week will be Mr. Steel FPV God Extraordinaire. And the week after that will be the inventor of the Fluidity FT Aviator um, joystick, astronaut Scott Parazinski. He will be on Thursday Night Live July the 25th. Easy thanks for watching. Say. Thanks for subscribing. Love you. Mean it. Until next time. Buh. It's your line, Jerry. There you go. And bye. <laughs>
enjoy pigeon the king, pigeon the king, the killer and the process me. Enjoy pigeon the king, pigeon the king, and you'll be your family a treat. It's time for nutrition to help them grow, and it's for fiber to make them grow. You enjoy pigeon the king. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny.